Hello, good morning. My name is Philip. Welcome to today's webinar on making use of the assignment tool within its learning. Uh, this is a short series of webinars that is designed to give uh, new users to its learning and people interested in distance education some insight into how tools um, in its learning can support teaching and students in distant education. So I'm a pedagogical consultant with the It's Learning Higher Education team, and today I'm very excited to present to you our assignment tool and how that is used in its learning to support pedagogical processes at your university or organization. So thank you for joining us around the world today. Uh, I'm excited to have you with us. And of course, these are unprecedented times. So on behalf of It's Learning, we wish you and your families and your schools and your, your school community well. Thanks for joining at this time. OK, I always start off with the agenda. It helps for you all to know what we will present today. I'm going to introduce the assignment tool and the features within it to support teaching and learning. I always try to make a, a mix of feature demonstrations and the, the uh, pedagogical processes that go behind the tools. And then I'm going to give you a demo of the student and teacher experience of the It's Learning Assignment tool. And finally, cap off the webinar with any uh, questions that you have and offer some more resources on how we can support your, you and your organization in transitioning to digital learning. Uh, there is a question and answer feature in the webinar tool, so please do go ahead and type your questions during the webinar. Uh, I'll make sure that I get to them at the end, and if we're out of time, I'll send you an email with any uh, questions that got missed. Okay, I want to start off with showing some of the assessment tools within its learning. Uh, these are the tools that you can use to assess student performance, but my main message here is they can also be used for formative assessment and especially in this time of distance education can really be used to check in with students uh, to provide feedback on small group activities or individual activities uh, the first tool that i recommend using is the task tool now this is something that's typically done offline like class participation or uh, participation um, in distance education, maybe by a, a discussion forum or participation in a video conference, a laboratory observation, a presentation that students are giving, potentially now over Zoom or Microsoft Teams, um, an end of module checklist or formative feedback to a student or group of students on a project that they're working on, for example. So really easy to provide formative feedback. Now, today's webinar focuses on the assignment tool. Now, think about this one in the traditional sense of a student submitting an essay that needs to be assessed by their teacher and feedback and scores given. Uh, that's the most uh, basic way to think about it. But really, what this tool is great for is when you're asking the student to submit digital work. It could be an essay, it could be a video, uh, it could be a portfolio that they've made in its learning. It could be something that they've made in a third-party tool. Maybe your university has a video hosting solution like uh, Kaltura or Panopto. Um, it could be just for formative purposes. These two uh, digital submissions, they don't need to be assessed in a summative way. It could be um, a whole range of uses when a student is submitting digital work. Another tool that I want to mention uh, just quickly is the digital test tool or quiz tool. And this is great for practice tests, uh, end of semester summative assessments, pre-unit knowledge checks, uh, understanding what students know and are interested in about a topic. Uh, and finally, with relation to assessment, we also offer LTI tools, so you can connect to your favorite third-party tools and bring results back into its learning via a, a technical integration called LTI. Now, of course, there's a whole other range of tools that its learning offers for collaboration and feedback. So uh, it goes without saying that things like uh, the messaging system, 
blogs and portfolios, uh, discussion forums, um, a whole, uh, the, the course announcements and bulletins area, heaps of opportunity for students to engage with each other, uh, to engage with the teacher, to do sort of one-to-many feedback or one-to-one -one feedback. Um, but this slide here is showing the specifically the assessment tools. When you do want to uh, add results to a grade book or uh, to give summative feedback. So keep in mind those other tools like discussion forums and portfolios because they are also super useful uh, in distance education. So with relation to the assignment tool in its learning and distance education, I've put up some ideas on the slide. I think the number one most used feature at the moment is this digital photocopier feature. Uh, I'll show that in a second. It, really what we're allowing you to do is make a copy of any Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, and even G Suite fi uh, file if your organization uses uh, G Suite for Education or Google for Education, uh, and, and push that out to all students. So instead of a teacher uh, standing in front of the photocopier, they can push out a template. Um, I think this is great for uh, reflection activities, for tasks where you're asking students to work in a specific manner and to uh, work through a process that you've um, created. Uh, especially formative assessment, the assignment tool is great for because of the way that it allows for discussion between the group or discussion between the teacher and the group or the student. So really good for that um, the process where a student submits a first draft and then there's a second draft to be submitted with feedback. Uh, the assignment tool is great for group work. So either asking students to create their own groups while working at distance or to uh, teacher created groups and lots of different ways that those groups can be created but um, getting students to work collaboratively in small groups during these times, uh, is a, it, the, the assignment tool supports that very well. Uh, peer review in these times as well. I think the teacher might need to reduce some of their workload. And peer review is an excellent way to encourage students to use those higher order thinking skills, those analysis skills, where you're asking students to assess each other to provide feedback on each other because not only do you need to understand the concepts and the, the theory yourself, but you also need to assess your peers' ability to uh, communicate those theories and, and objectives themselves. So a great feature there, especially in distant education. Uh, video and audio, I'll show you a slide of this. Uh, it's Learning has super modern video and audio tools which can really help personalization. And in this time of distant education, when we're used to so much physical contact with students, uh, bringing in audio and video can really support um, student engagement, can help students feel less isolated when they're studying at home and, and connect more with their peers. And please do remember that this is also can be done, for example, in a discussion forum where you're asking students to submit videos, audio, uh, to share a, a one-minute clip or pod, podcast style of um, uh, teaching and learning. So heaps of opportunities provided within its learning. Now, having a look at the interface, here is the digital photocopier example. When you're creating an assignment, uh, I've tailored this to Office 365, but every Word or Excel or PowerPoint file that you upload, you can choose whether students can view and download this file or whether each student should get a copy of it and this is a file that they should be working within. So in this example, you can see that there's two Word files. The first one is a document that you want students to submit in. And they don't need Office 365 accounts. They do this all in the browser. Uh, it's really smooth. Um, the second file here is uh, tips for writing a good essay. So this is a, a file that students can view, and they can use it to support their work, but they don't actually work in this file. So uh, a little bit about the interface of how this feature works.
Okay, um, a quick preview of the modern audio and video tools. In this example, the teacher is reviewing the student's work and they've clicked the record button on the side there and they're going to just film themselves for a couple of moments and provide some personalized feedback back to the student. So again, distant education, less one-on-one -on -one contacts, less uh, individual contact with students across the, the, the lecture or the workshop that you're used to. So a quick and easy way to personalize this. A quick tip for any of you teachers out there, you can record the video on your iPhone or your um, your, your Android phone and then uh, within the audio and video tool of its learning you can simply choose the upload tab and grab it directly from your gallery or your devices library super easy to record those videos either directly in the browser or from your preferred device All right, a quick snapshot of the peer assessment tool. Like I said earlier, a great way to encourage students to provide feedback and reflect on each other's work. Here's a screenshot of what annotation and commenting looks like in a PDF document. I showed the Word document before. Here's the PDF document. Um, and teachers can choose which students re, uh, review and assess which other students. So a really nice way for um, to lighten the teacher's workload and again to do something formative. This doesn't need to be used for summative assessment all of the time. That's a, a misconception that the assignment tool can only be used for a summative end of term assessment. But really it can be used for day-to-day -day activities within your digital classroom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the demo of the tool in action. Please, again, do uh, ask any questions within the questions feature, and we will get to them as soon as uh, the demo is completed. Okay, so to demo the assignment tool, I've logged in to the It's Learning site as Runa, and he is a staff member here, and he's teaching the language teaching course. Now, just like we saw in the previous webinar, um, assignments and content is built via the It's Learning Plans tool. So Runa is going to go ahead and uh, look into his plans. Uh, at the moment, he's working in Module 1 English Grammar, and we can see all of the content that Runa has already added into this plan. So documents and videos and discussion forums and, and different pieces of uh, content and activities that students have to work their way through the English Teaching English Grammar module that Runa is responsible for. So creating a new assignment can easily be done here via the Add menu. We have the most popular things right at your fingertips, like adding a file from your Office 365, your SharePoint, or your, your OneDrive account, uh, creating things like tasks and pages, um, finding content in your course. Um, but assignment being so popular is right up here at the top. So it's really easy to grab and reuse an assignment that I've created previously, or I can create a brand new assignment if if that's what I want to do. Uh, right now, Runa is going to go in here and have a look at an assignment that he's been working on already. Uh, so I'm brought up into the student view where I can see all of the students who this activity is for. This particular activity is customized for five of Runa's more advanced students. So these are the only five students who can see this in the course because he's customized that uh, for personalized learning, these five students should see this additional activity that he's asking them to do. So the cover page um, typically shows the instructions for an activity, what you want the students to do. Um, so here Runa has written the bullet points of, of what's to be shown. It's really easy to add pictures, to visualize the assignment, to add documents, and to uh, show the students exactly what they should be doing. Uh, so in this instance, 
There's a template document that Rune is asking the students to use. And he's also included the rubric, um, which makes it super easy for the student to see exactly what's expected of them and what they need to do to be successful in this assignment. So let's have a look at what it looks like to actually create this type of content. Uh, it's learning as a really powerful, rich text editor, which makes it really easy to upload things like pictures here in the image icon. We have an audio and video recorder, so it's really easy to record audio or record video and instructions right into the assignment or upload them from the device if you've already recorded it on your mobile phone. Uh, embedding content from third-party sources like YouTube videos or SlideShare content. Really easy. Just grab your URL and paste it in here. Um, and of course, you can drag and drop files into uh, this area. Files that you want to be right in front and center in the assignment tool. Now you can see here that Runa is using the make a copy for each student, the digital photocopier that I talked about in the introduction. He's going to switch that to students can view this document. He wants to give it to students to be able to use, but not necessarily that they need to submit their response in this particular file. Uh, so this is the setup of the actual the case, the, the assignment that Runa is asking uh, users to complete. And over on the side here, he can also see the various settings that he's configured with this particular assignment. So let's have a look into some of those. So the first one is visibility, uh, really intuitive icons here which show whether the assignment is visible to students or perhaps I want to schedule that this assignment will become visible next week at 9 a.m. on Monday. So I can schedule when it's visible to students and I can also schedule the deadline when students are expected to have this in by and that drives the students task list so they'll see this deadline in their task list um, you can indicate that this is homework which is typically used to show that this is not a class activity this is not something you're doing in one of your workshops you're doing it at home uh, adding learning objectives is done here and assessment scales. Now this particular assessment scale has been set up by the administrator, but Rune as a teacher or his department or institute that he uh, works in can create their own assessment scales uh, on the site to be used across the, the site as well. So Rune, he, this is a formative assessment, so he's gonna use something like completed and not completed and he's going to add it into the category of mandatory assignments. So these are a bunch of categories that Runa has created to tell his students um, what type of activity this is and to group similar assignments together. Uh, here's the options, really intuitive to add peer assessment or not, just like we discussed earlier, and adding group activities, anonymous submission, and uh, things like plagiarism control. So really intuitive, easy to use interface with hover overs that um, you know, tell the teacher what they're doing if they're not sure what settings these are. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and save that. And this will now be live and available to students to complete. So let's have a look at the student experience of submitting the assignment. So when John, a student of Runa's, logs in to the site, he can see all of the tasks that he has responsible in chronological order. So this list makes it really easy for John to manage his workload. And here he can see the assessment that Runa has given to him. But of course, he could typically navigate that via his course, where he can see uh, that there's been updates in there and he typically would navigate to the assignment via his course, but he's going to access it today directly from the task list. So the assignment shows John the key information that he needs, like the learning objectives that he's expected to demonstrate in this activity, 
that it's not homework, the deadline, the status, and the assessment scale to be used, as well as all of the instructions and videos and, and images that Runa has shared. Now, remember Runa attached a file for John to consider using, and these open really nicely directly in Word, so you don't need to download anything. Um, but of course, you can download it if you would prefer to maybe work off on this file offline and then resubmit it. Uh, John can see all of the rubrics and assessment criteria here, which makes him really understand what exactly he needs to do to show success in this assignment. Now, answering is super easy. This is the last thing we want students to have stress about is answering the assignment. They should be stressing about doing the best work they can. So John's going to go ahead and find a file that he's been working on and just drag it straight in there. And that'll just upload in just a moment or two. And he could type in a response here. Uh, he could attach a video recording, an Excel spreadsheet, programming code, all sorts of different types of content can be um, attached here. And he can, of course, use the audio and video recorders to record live or rec upload from his mobile device. Uh, if you click here, again, John, he can quickly access the files that he's saved in his OneDrive. So this is great. Maybe he's been working at home and now he's in the computer lab and he can access his OneDrive remotely without being on his home computer. So that's a really nice feature. John's going to go ahead and review his essay to make sure he's submitted the right piece of work. Opens up really quickly there in Microsoft Word Online. Super smooth and easy. Okay, great. This is the right essay. So John is going to go ahead and submit that. Now, when Runa logs back into his site, he can see in his task list the assignments and work that students have been doing in his courses. He can see that one student has answered the personal reflection assignment. So let's have a look. Runa clicks into the assignment and can see that John has recently submitted the work. Now, It's Learning has an all-in-one grader, which opens this really nicely into one screen so that you can navigate quickly across all of the students who have submitted their work. Um, John's work is really nicely embedded right here into its learning so the assignment opens straight up and this is where he is able to uh, use a whole bunch of uh, Microsoft Word features like um, uh, highlighting or commenting or um, you know, adding things to Runa's work so that he can, in a formative assessment process, um, go ahead and provide feedback to John. Another feature that's really widely used is, um, especially in distance education, is audio or video recording, where John uh, Runa can record video or audio feedback and send that along with his. Um, uh, feedback. So the rubric here can help to score and assess John's performance and uh, Runa can quickly type in a few comments here or open the full editor and, and get into um, really in-depth feedback that you might not want to put in annotations to John's work but you might want this to be other summaries here. Uh, one thing for formative assessment that teachers really like is this teacher's notes function. And this means that you can keep secret notes about the student's work. So when it is formatively being used, you can make notes to yourself on what you should double check the next time John submits or, or notes for a future reference. There's also a discussion feature here where the student and teacher can have a dialogue about the work. Again, super handy in a formative assessment process. And so I'm going to go ahead and change that status to uh, review the feedback and resubmit so that John can uh, see the feedback that's been given to him and resubmit this assignment. And go ahead and again, the big green button to save and move on to the next student who hasn't yet submitted their work.
Okay. Uh, so that was the demo of the assignment tool within its learning. Like I showed, super easy to um, you know get started with it, but at the same time, lots of uh, advanced features for power users and for people who want to make the most of these distant education times. So I'm going to go ahead and show uh, a quick overview of the series of these webinars that we're running. So we've run some nice uh, Zoom and planning courses in its learning webinars. Please go ahead and check those uh, download links. Today is the Creating Assignments webinar, and we'll follow up soon with the Communication Tools webinar on Tuesday. So please do join us there. The link's right down at the bottom, and we'll also follow up in email. Uh, for these links. Okay. If you are interested in learning more about its learning, if you're already a user and you would like some support, uh, please do reach out to your key account manager to discuss any questions you have. Uh, we can support you and your organization in a huge number of ways. And you know, your key account manager is your first point of contact at its learning for support that you may need. Um, if you're interested in implementing its learning, if you haven't been using it uh, before, please do use this contact us address or follow up in the email um, that's going to be sent at the end of the webinar. And again, here's the link to the future remote learning webinars, higher education. Um, this is where you can keep abreast of all of the webinars that we are delivering focused on the uh, remote learning concepts. And as always, follow us on social media. This is the best way to keep um, up to date with what is happening on the It's Learning side. Okay, four questions. We did have one question in the chat, and that was about the best way to get students to provide feedback on each other's work. And I think there's a few options within its learning that support students to student feedback. The first one that I want to mention is portfolios. Portfolios and blogs are a great way for students to um, you know, create a journal and a, a blog of the achievements that they've made in class, of the work that they're doing, of the concepts that they're learning, and present that to a wider audience. So blogs have nice commenting features where students and teachers can provide comments and feedback. And another option is the discussion forum. So instead of asking students to submit work in the assignment tool, one option would be that students present information, their uh, audios and videos, um, present the work that they're doing within the discussion forum, and encourage students to provide feedback that way. Especially in distant education, asynchronous communication is really important. Students are logging in at different times. They have family commitments. So allowing discussion forums, which allows students to consider the question being asked and to log in and provide feedback and discussion at a time that suits them, the discussion forum is a great tool. But of course, I don't want to go without mentioning the peer review tool. Uh, that really allows the assessment opportunities like the rubrics, and the, the grading that was shown in the video and allows or it forces students to uh, consider the criteria of the activity and when they're assessing others. So that was the one question posted in the uh, questions portal. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed the webinar and got a good insight into the assignment tool at its learning. Thank you and have a great day.